Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a new kind of uh, experimental uh, version of Sleep With Me we've never done before. So welcome. These are just bedtime stories from our podcast, Sleep With Me. And make them feel fresh. These ones are from a couple years ago. Uh, so, so, so if you're a regular listener, you might get a refresh. And if you're new, these are just bedtime stories uh, from a show called Sleep With Me. They're strange, they're meandering, they're a little bit different. And all this is made possible by listeners like you, regular listeners like you. And so I just want to let you know, that's how we're able to put the show out. And uh, so if you uh, are a fan of Sleep With Me, you listen to it on a regular basis, please consider supporting the show. You get ad-free episodes, you get ad-free story-only episodes, tons of other cool stuff at Sleep With Me Plus. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. But if you're in a position and you have some money every month or you say, hey, maybe I don't watch that streaming service, I'd rather give it to a podcast. Think about your favorite podcast. It doesn't have to be Sleep With Me and support that podcast. If it is Sleep With Me, I can support the show, be great. But if it isn't or there's a podcast you listen to, way more, brings you a lot of value during the day. Please support that podcast. Podcast is going through a different time right now. And your favorite podcast, uh, the one you get the most out of, uh, could use your support the most. Uh, so consider supporting it however they request support. Uh, just check it out, like listen to the show or check out their website. Or consider supporting Sleep With Me. If the if Sleep With Me, you say, oh, no, Sleep With Me is the one I listen to the most. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Thanks. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's a promise I hope to keep when I, that I, my rambles and pointless meanders bring you extra sleeps. I'm only laughing because I say, I hope I get lucky with these syllables. As uh, You see, why don't you play in my brain? Literally, that's why I was laughing. It said, Scooch, why don't you figure out the rhymes ahead of time? And I say, well... Sorry, like uh, too, too late. I already pressed, pressed record. And if you're wondering what you, when you pressed play, where you arrived, well, it's you. If you're confused, you may be in the right place because it's time for sleep with me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And uh, when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, if you can remember, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors is how we're able to be here for you for free twice a week. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a quick message here. Uh, if you get a lot out of sleep with me, if you're a regular listener, you like these new things we're trying out, like the story-only version of the show. If you're new, don't worry about any of this. But if you're a regular listener of Sleep With Me or you're a regular listener of any podcast, if you have a favorite podcast uh, and it's not Sleep With Me, that's totally cool. If you have podcasts you listen to way more or you get way more value out of, I totally understand that. Consider supporting that podcast. Uh Podcasting is a industry is kind of going through a weird phase right now. Direct support from listeners is going to be, it seems like it's going to be the future of most shows. And so consider supporting the podcast you really love. And uh, you could do that. You could find out, you could listen, listen to the show and see how they ask to be supported. Um, and or reach out to them and say, hey, how can I support you? Or if you can't afford, uh, you know, a few dollars a month, you say, hey, how else can I support you? But if Sleep With Me is the one, you, Sleep With Me Plus is the best way to support Sleep With Me. Sign up for Sleep With Me Plus. Not only you get an unbelievable, sweet, different ways to listen to the show, but it's a huge help uh, for us to be able to do stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, think about what your favorite podcast is and then go ahead and go to their website or, or if you already know how, how they like to be supported, support that show. Uh, thanks and good night. All right. Hey, everybody. Scoot's here. And um, uh, this is a... Uh, this is this episode coming up. It's a cr crossover kind of uh, episode, kind of. It's a little bit different, uh, and uh, it'll be fun because it's something we haven't done before. So I'm really excited about it. It's a crossover with a project my friend Adam Cecil's been working on for a while. It's a, a newsletter. Uh, it's called Nightwater. You could sign up at uh, nightwater.email. And uh, Adam's been someone that's helped me out throughout the history of the podcast. I've worked with him in a lot of different capacities. Uh, but he's also been there to kind of walk me through stuff and listen to me and give me his guidance and wisdom. But beyond that is uh, the, the Adam really has a, like a taste and a sensibility that I think a lot of us uh, share. 
Uh, he's into some cool stuff, and Nightwater kind of, uh, <laughs> I guess, represents that. So we're, we're going to, I guess, without further ado, I'm going to send things off. Uh, if you get comfortable, you get co- cozy. If your eyes aren't closed, maybe you close your eyes and you picture me sitting there. And I'm, I'm tuning the dial on a radio. I'm tuning it in and... Uh, you know, the night air is a little bit thicker. And it's one of those wee hours, but I'm in a good place. I'm tuning the dial. I'm saying, oh boy, I'm settling in. I'm getting excited. And uh, there's a slight pause uh, as you uh, hear scoots start winding down. And then you hear, welcome. To uh, SWQ, uh, your radio all night long, Radio Nightwater. Tonight's show, like every show, a call in from around the world, or right or your neighbors in nearby may be calling in here at Radio NWQ. That's Nightwater. We used to have a W or a K, but then we went to the internet. They said that, you know, the airwaves alone couldn't handle the questions we get at night water. So now I'm handling it for you. We've got questions. You've got questions. We've got answers here at Radio Nightwater. Oh, boy, do I love saying Radio Nightwater. Night water, night water, the only place water and radios mix at night or during the day. Don't actually, we, it's more of a figure of speech. And we've got a, a couple of questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's the first question that came in. Uh, hey, 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 hey our Radio Nightwater, uh, what is the worst possible song you could include in a, in a co- commercial for a place uh, that rents out homes that you may, instead of room, like that you may rent and that you may rent to use like you would a hotel room, but it's a home or an apartment or a condo? And I say, oh boy, that reminds me. We we did this research back in March of 2021, and uh, because uh, the you know a song you would say probably you shouldn't choose would be "Forever Young," and maybe you even put it acoustically, but don't listen to the lyrics, you know, because if you do, or you say, wasn't wasn't there a time Scoots said that. Uh, they say, let's not comment on the movie Forever Young because, uh, yes, I saw the movie. Yes, it starred the great Julia Roberts. Uh, but it was a movie that I think I went to, like, as a third wheel. So that's why I have strong feelings about it. Not because of the quality of the film or the song, neither of which would be promote, pro, good to promote uh, vacation homes. Uh, but because, uh, yeah, it was probably one of my friends was on a date with someone that I had a crush on. And they said, why don't you cut, like, uh, since you, since I asked you, since you were friends with her, but secretly in love with her, uh, then I told you I liked her. And then she also, you know, said that she liked me. Why don't you come along with us on our date? Uh, wouldn't that be fun? And I'd say, okay. I guess so. Maybe, you know, maybe it'll be like, uh, so what movie are you going to see? Oh, it doesn't matter because we'll be, you'll be sitting. Can you sit like two seats away from us though? Because there may be a face-to-face contact. Uh, I mean, you can sit two seats away. That way, okay. So you don't, well, could could I pick, oh, no, no, we're going to see Forever Young. It, it's a movie about something. I don't know. It's uh they said it's a good one. That Like, uh she was like, oh, okay. And it doesn't seem, I saw the commercial for it, though. Also, it's based on a song, I think. So that's the song you don't want to use. Uh, and you could read more about it at Nightwater. Other songs include Landslide, uh, which, again, you'd say, okay, that's probably not one uh, like you'd want, uh, whether it's <laughs> like uh, it's definitely not a good idea. And another song you might not want to use is I Will Always Love You, whether it's uh, Dolly Parton 
or uh, Whitney or whatever. Uh, you say, okay, does that... Uh, so, yeah, but probably don't choose any of those. There's also some great... Another one said, people said, maybe they'll use uh, Tears in Heaven next. So you should probably... Here's the thing. It's I know it's tough. Well, here, well here's something... I don't know if, you know, we looked into this, but it's like, uh, just because you have the rights to the to use the song, or your boss said, we just got the rights to Forever Young uh, for 80,000 times what we pay you a year uh, to use in our commercial, uh, you, you could say, did you already pay for them? Well, yeah, it's my favorite song. You know, when I when I listen to it, I pretend I'm an airplane and I fly around. And that, remi- you know, that reminds me actually of the book I just finished. A uh, really good book. I don't know why I'm laughing. There's no, literally nothing funny about it. But uh, it was that was a, I don't know. I love reading. I love fiction. I love being on Radio Nightwater. And I love going off topic and making it about me. Uh, but I just uh, read uh, Ishiguro's uh a uh, book, uh, Never Let Me Go, which is based on uh, song lyrics. I don't know if it's, I never looked it up whether it was an imaginary song, a fictional song or not, uh, and how m- 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 music and dance, uh, weird that I, like, while I'm, ma- anyway, uh, so <laughs> Radio Nightwater, we forgot where we were, uh, but a uh, good book. I, I really highly recommend it. I, by the way, I haven't seen the film. And it probably won't just not because, I mean, unless, unless somebody else, unless you're out there and I have a crush on you and you you also have a crush on the person I have a crush on and you have a crush on my friend. I don't think that's, I, that situation hopefully doesn't exist. Oh boy. Now I'm thinking it like, uh, we could go see it if it was replaying it, it uh, maybe for, to help me through a process. But I, w- I would probably say, no, I'm not. Like, the most healthy answer for me would be like, no, I don't think I'm going to go. It'd be, be honest, like, uh, I, would, I guess I wouldn't say anything because I wouldn't want to ruin your budding romance. Uh, but I also don't want to sit next to you. Uh, and, and you say, Scoot, how many times has that happened to you? And I would say, no joke, uh... Let's see, I could think eighth grade for sure, probably, oh, uh, sixth grade, eighth grade, Pro- I don't, I can't recall it happened, oh, seventh grade, no, 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 okay, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth for sure. Uh, I think it happened twice with Julia Roberts movies, maybe, there was another one, not a, like, an, again, not a comedy one. So, uh, anyway, right here at Radio Nightwater, uh, answering your questions, getting them answered the best we can. Off topic at night. Okay, we got another one, and this one is interesting because you may hear more about Adam and I talking about this in the future. But what about hit clips? Uh, you remember hit clips? Uh, they, uh, you don't remember them? Well, we'll tell you all about them. You know, once upon a time, we our phones were not as smart as they, they find themselves to be. And uh, you had to have separate devices. And I know some people out there, they still use separate devices for separate things. Uh, but they used to, used to have, uh, in, back then, they weren't even solid state. You, had play, you know, you've heard about my relationship with my iPod and Carol King and how she's... Uh, spiritual her, her spiritual essence found its way to the algorithm in my iPod. But yeah, a lot of people had iPods. Uh, they were about the size of a deck of playing cards, or you had smaller ones, but let's just go with that one. And people would curate their music, or maybe you would share music. Uh, and uh, people like uh, Adam, uh, who here in, in the station here at Radio Nightwater, uh, making everything happen used to even meticulously fill out the uh, metadata fields. Old Scoots, he w- had that on his list. It's still on my list to, to do uh, is fill out those metadata fields. Uh, some of them I did, and then I filled them out wrongly. So then I said, one day I'll do it. And, and you know, we, we live in a world, at least when I'm recording this, uh, 
Rika kind of lists it as long as you pay whatever, nine, ten bucks a month, which is a pretty good deal. Uh, maybe it's 15, I don't know, but uh, you can listen to whatever you want for the most part. Uh, and the metadata is already there. But Adam points out to us, is that really your music? You know, there's a different connection. But oh boy, way back in the original aughts, uh, the double O, that was when you could get your hits on a clip uh, with hit clips. And I have a box of hit clips here. And is it, exci- is it exciting times? Uh, like uh, now, some of you listening are from my generation, maybe, maybe even a generation before, maybe a generation a little bit after. So you had your records, you had your cassette tapes, you had your CDs. Uh, and somewhere during that transition, actually, Adam and I had a conversation about it. Uh, that's when hit clips appeared. Hit clips were uh, tiny, keychain-sized cartridges. Millions of units sold before they were discontinued in 2004. Now, they could only uh, contain 60 seconds a song of a song until Hit Clips Disc came out in 2003, which was 120 seconds. They were in mono, and the earliest players were just a, like a piece of plastic with a reader, I guess an amplifier with just one headphone. Though at some point you could get a boombox. Uh, the earbud was wired permanently to the plastic body. And Adam even says that, you know, it was hard to connect to, to, from your, because it was supposed to clip to your belt. The, the, the hits clipped to the clip, uh, the hit. Uh, but they did, it was it, like, as Adam once said, uh, they make up for a personality. It was like a tiny record collection you could take with you anywhere. Like uh, you had a thousand miles, uh, survivor, complicated. It looks like a little Avril Levine, Levine not Levine, NSYNC, uh, Brittany, Don't Go Ch- I think I have Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls here somewhere, or 60, 60 seconds of it. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, but yeah, once iPods appeared in the iPod Mini, that was when the hit clips uh, started to move away. Times changed. And the Hiccups player was twenty bucks, uh, but it, the cartridges were three ninety nine, which uh, well, iTunes was selling songs at ninety nine cents. Now today, seventy million songs on Spotify cost nine dollars and ninety nine cents a month, uh, which Adam did the math. It doesn't even. It's pretty confusing. But uh, you know, everybody has n- nostalgia about music, right? Uh, we, so a lot of us have records. Uh, some of us buy records and we never play them. That's Scoots. Uh, so you could, you know, you could get a hit clips player, listen to the 60 seconds of Hero through a single earbud. You could even watch this uh, this video Adam has on uh, Radio Night on the Nightwater. So, yeah, it's a little bit about uh, what was the question, Scoots? Well, that's a great one. I don't know. I think it was whatever happened to hit clips or something. Oh, sorry. I didn't. Uh, how do people used to listen to music before Spotify? We answered it. Uh, hit clips uh, or other other means. Uh, cassette tapes, uh, CDs, uh, but like portable. Th- those were th- like the hit clips were way more portable than those things. Uh, is there a cool way to let people know what kind of music I listen to? Maybe some sort of keychain contraption? Oh boy, talk about a contraption. That's Hit Clips here on Radio Night. A reminder, you're listening to Radio Nightwater. S, what was it? D- N, W, Q. You're tuned to Radio Nightwater on your radio dial. Another question came in about Hit Clips that we accidentally answered without asking it is, uh, that you'll have to check the math uh, using the link here for Radio Nightwater. That's uh, NWQ. K, K, NWQ. For now, we'll pretend we're K. I remember when I learned this uh, in university. K means west of the Mississippi, and W means east of the Mississippi. W. NWQ. I like that because it has two dub- double the W's. Uh, 
but only one twenty five percent water. Twenty five percent night, twenty five percent water, twenty five percent questions, and twenty five percent. Uh, so you know where uh, that night water is uh, east of the Mississippi. W and W Q. Based on the monthly subscription cost, how much would the value of a single song be on Spotify? Well, look it up uh, at Nightwater. All right, let's get into late night vibes. Questions about late night vibes always come up uh, in the in the Nightwater, in the water, in the night. Uh, uh, the fleeting fr- fl- frustrations of the diary. We're looking up night vibes, and this is uh, NWC. What are late, late night vibes? Of course, so let's start there, here on Radio Nightwater. Oh, this is one. It's a water cooler here. And Adam says this is back in August of 2021. Trying to infuse late night water with more late night vibes. Uh, Cutting the late night vibes into thin slices and plopping them in a jug, boring that pure filtered night water to soak up the vibes. Uh, so, night water readers, tell us about your night water vibes. Thomas says, uh, night is dark and still. It's a great chance to make some time for oneself. What's so special about late night vibes for me, however, is it's a chance to really experience a film or piece of music. The distractions of the rest of the world are muted. No one's texting, no one's posting. This type of undivided attention is rare these days. Christine B. says, uh, Our senior night vibes are TV until 10 p.m. Some time to read in bed, then lights out. Retirement night vibes are like that. Grant S. says, when everyone else in the apartment is asleep and you get the undivided attention of the cat, uh, when all the other lights on your block are off, when you can watch, play, or listen to something you'd be embarrassed to in front of your partner, that's Late Night Vibes. You can catch them here at Radio Nightwater. Uh, w, whatever, uh, WNWQ, Radio Nightwater. Jim E says, uh, to me, late night vibes are watching, rewatching Super Bad by yourself on a Tuesday night. That movie really stands the test of time. Chloe uh, comes in and says, it's not late per se, but already quiet. And the neighborhood is getting quieter. The cats have chosen the sleeping spots. The upstairs neighbors have finally stopped stomping around unidentifiable sounds in a creaky old apartment. The dishwasher, oh boy, that's a classic sound. Right here on Radio Nightwater, oh boy, the whirring of the dishwasher, erasing the remnants of today's meals. The same apartment across the street with its lights on deep into the night, peering out onto the street below. Owners hoping their dogs will pee one last time before morning. And finally, coming from what I believe is a patron saint of Radio Nightwater, Patrick. Uh, when I think about late night vibes, I think about mellowing out and having a session, enjoying a beverage, a snack, a YouTube video about Alexander the Great's failures in the East, cool breeze, a car being way too down, loud down North Willard Street, bothering everyone on the block. The basil plant by the sink, the changing seasons, the rejection of that reality. I just want Steve Irwin back. Is it time? Is time a trap or a spontaneous gift? Sixty years in his in a history book is treated like a short period of time and a long process. If you're lucky to live in a time of greatness, or at least an overture to one coming. Sixty years is nothing to the history book. How do we make terms with everything we need to do in that time? How long could that possibly be enough? And yet every night I vibe. And Adam calls it back, and at, and yet every night I vibe. And oh boy, Patrick, you might be the patron saint of sleep with me listeners' brains because that sounds like a late night vibe here around sleep with me. So we hope that answers your question. What are late night vibes here on Radio Nightwater? W. Nightwater. NQ, NWQ. <laughs> Radio Nightwater. Uh, oh boy. 
You know, this is one of the articles that really got me hooked on Nightwater, and I'm not even kidding. I remember reading this. Uh, it was the summer of 2021, and I felt like I could see straight into Adam's soul. Because when you're talking compost, you're talking night water. Uh, not all of this, you know, so there's, there's, uh, the, some of this is loamy content for uh, a sleep podcast, and some of it's just loamy for compost. Uh, so we'll stick to it. But Adam writes an opening paragraph that's uh, a better fit for the daytime or a night with the creaky floors and a dog nearby. In an interesting novel, but then he goes into talking about his fascination uh, with being in Vermont and uh, watching the food and newspaper and cardboard, cardboard and grass clippings all become dirt. You know, Vermont led the way, as it does with a lot of things, about putting food scraps in the trash, meaning you had to compost them at home. Or bring them to drop off points around the states. Sounds familiar here in California. And his parents got a large black plastic cube for the backyard, which was slowly filling with food scraps and other compostable materials. And uh, not long ago, Adam and Chloe were up there in Vermont uh, tending his loam. I love saying loamy, so I keep saying it. Oh boy. Fanoni phone, I'm a loamy loam. Oh, give me a home where in loam I can roam. Uh, and maybe I'll even write a cone. And where, you know, like, uh, but uh, a cone for my loam. Okay, so digging coffee grounds uh, out of K cups to add the nitrogen, torn up newspapers. Even though newspapers are harder and harder to find for the carbon, caterpillars have been in the cube, uh, getting ready to become moss. Uh, and they even checked the compost thermometer in an elong, elongated metal rod. Uh, it looks like it fell down the earth from a giant's barbecue. And it was a steady 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but Adam needed it active uh, where the bacteria thrives, but not too hot. Because if the you know, bacteria is too hot, too hot, too hot, bacti, you get bacteria is going to run away, baby. So a delicate silence. You get that nitrogen-rich green materials, carbon-rich brown, aeration, moistness. So, oh boy. Oh boy, does car talk, oh boy, does talk and compost look good on you, baby. Uh, get one of these off and you'll stray further and further from the active past. But back in New York, uh, Adam still looks at it and says, I could be composting this thing when it goes in the trash. You know, times changed in the, uh, 20, you know, 1990, you know, 2020, 2021, 2022. Uh, will compost return? To the home of W N W N W Q. Wait, did, did I, yeah, no, W N W Q. Maybe you could stick a thermometer right in the center of the city. Oh boy, I feel like I'm watching a noir film now. And that's how the opening paragraph went as well. And discover we've gone from steady to active to virgin on hot, verging. It's not hard to feel like we're just a living on the top uh, with things piled on the sidewalk for hours waiting for pickup in the heat. Oh, boy, in the summer. It's not easy. But glass, as Adam uh, posited, he broke a glass uh, that was once a wedding gift to his parents. Uh, and the glass made up of natural materials, but not compostable, has to get to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll take over a million years to break down naturally. It'll be there for a while. Who knows? Uh, when a compost pile gets too hot, though, here's the last tip. Uh, you can split it and spray water on it in hopes of cooling it down. But what else? What else can you do, we ask? Well, we could ask some more questions here on WNWQ. It's Radio Nightwater. 
Let's see here. Well, well, this is another one, and this may have been, Was this the first article at Nightwater? Oh, boy, is this one. Now, Adam and I have talked about visiting this place in person, but some really good-looking guy from Disney or Nickelodeon got there first. But this was back, uh, oh, wow, Valentine's Day. Oh, wait, does anybody know? <laughs> Don't let me know because it'll be too late. Uh, is Valentine's Day in February or... Uh, uh, it's in February 12th. I always get February 12th and 14th mixed up. Uh, not a problem for me because, uh, it doesn't matter anyway. My, my Valentine's my laundry, but this was a, a great article. Classic W and WQ. If you, if you check out one article based on my, you know, check this one out too. Check out too. And I may just read through this one here uh, because it's so good. This is uh, a classic uh, Nightwater, Babyland General Gazette. And I guess I'll paraphrase too, but Adam came up with about a dozen possible names for the newsletter before settling on Nightwater. And one of them was a Babyland General Gazette, uh, Babyland General Hospital. If you didn't already know it, uh, I wonder when this is going to come out because I'm like having, but this is interesting a little bit, you know, I got to make it about me because it's just my, that's where my tangents come from. Uh, so we're working out in Spice Friends episode seven and that has a cabbage patch situation in it. Uh, not someone doing the cabbage patch, uh, so hopefully this is like some sort of a great synchronicity. I didn't even realize it. Uh, so we're really, I love it when, the, I love it when a plan comes together. As somebody once said, okay, so if you don't already know it, uh, Babyland Generals where Cabbage Patch kids are born, both literally and metaphorically. It's also a mecca for Cabbage Patch kids fans. Uh, and Adam even included a picture from the Cabbage Patch kids website, a masterpiece it is both, uh, the picture is, uh, interesting. I, I, like, uh, I wanted to say it was surreal, but there's no surreality to it. On the right side is, uh, it's, it looks like it's a combination of like a, a photograph, a computerized art, a paper art, and hand drawn art, which is also strange. And also layers of photographs. So the back, the far background in the entire photo is like a, speaking of loamy, like a rich area, very green, but it, it verdant, but it looks like it's like a, a few different ecosystems. Like uh, some of it looks near tropical and some of it looks like uh, the southern United States. There's also a... Uh, uh, a rolling hill of cabbage patch on the right and a, a stork uh, that's carrying a baby, just like a stork. The stork looks computer generated and kind of unreal. It's also being lit from below. And I can't tell if it's the stork's head. It may be have some sort of other being riding on the back of it. Uh, a different um, um, a kind of, I don't know, if, is this a pastiche of different uh, r r green hills? dominating the center background is a gigantic tree. And I don't know anything about Cabbage Patch lore. Hopefully we'll uh, learn more here. Is a gigantic tree, like a very thick tree. The tree has uh, leaves, but it also has like, a, I don't even know, a combination of Christmas decorations, Christmas lights, some of which are on, and then figurines that don't seem to have anything to do with cabbage patches. Uh, or they could be living beings. I have no idea. Like, it like, look like, like rabbits. Uh, bizarre, bizarre. Uh, then in the center of the photo is a nurse uh, who looks like someone um, you might see on a, like an anthology TV show about a zone that happens at twi twilight. She has a look on her face like she's... Uh, like she's on one of those, yeah, that show that's uh, zoning out at twilight. And she says, I've awoken in this photo. Uh, I'm a nurse holding a Cabbage Patch newborn. 
who's looking, both of them are looking straight at the camera. To the right of the baby cabbage patch, newborn, is what looks like, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to describe this, uh, an, an emerald fluid in a, uh, something you'd see when you go, like in a thing, like a, 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 a capsule that's used to deliver the fluid uh, to people who need it, uh, through, through, then there's a hose coming from the, the, and it's like, not just emerald. It's like the color, not a, like the color of an emerald gem. It's even sparkling. And below that is a cabbage patch of cabbage patch babies. Some of which are frowning or all of them are frowning. And, uh, there's probably, well, let's just count here. I mean, it won't be accurate because I'm not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 12, 16, 17, at least 21. Oh, no, there's more on the sides, so like somewhere around 25 to 30. One, it looks like she may have plucked the baby she's holding from an empty cabbage patch or cabbage, whatever. To her, to her right, and there's a lot of kids. Like the 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 instead of a cabbage, there's a, the head of a child. Which we well, well, let's read more because the more time we spent this picture, the further off the rails it goes. Here on Radio Nightwater, W and WQ, uh, your late night vibes uh, coming in confusing. I forgot. I think we were supposed to answer a question. And we're answering it, but 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 we'll get the question later, or I forgot what it was. One question would be, how'd you get the name Nightwater? And two, what, like, uh, really, are you serious? After we re- we answer this, that'd probably be the question. So Babyland General is a flagship store of the cab- for the Cabbage Patch Kids. It's a once popular brand of babies dolls. Kind of happened just before Scoots's time, or I, you know, I was I existed then, but uh, uh, 1983. There, oh, there's also a um, um, Black Friday, uh, the uh, Star Kid musicals in like uh, also satirizes it. I would say I watched that this holiday season. Uh, the 1996 Arnold Schwarzenegger film Jingle All the Way. And then, yeah, Black Friday with, uh, and then a certain episode of Spice Friends 7, maybe. Hasn't been recorded yet, but, uh, and, the, you know, it, 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 there's a fervor uh, around these, uh, acquiring these dolls. Uh, and while the dolls, according to Adam, no longer inspire that same fervor, they do still have plenty of rabid fans, uh, the hospital pre twenty you know pre twenty twenty restrictions saw two hundred and fifty thousand people every year, and Adam first found out about this uh, doing an old job researching roadside attractions, and he was fascinated and haunted by what he saw. Uh, the employees of Babyland General cosplay as medical professionals. The centerpiece of the hospital is Mother Cabbage, a twelve foot oh this must be the tree twelve foot tall artificial tree from which all Cabbage Patch kids are supposedly born, and from which a lucky few hand-sewn Cabbage Patch children are actually born. And uh, Adam points out uh, Angela Garbez's uh, essay, The Babyland Diaries, uh, which uh, talks about how it plays out. Uh, and apparently this is a, a chain, like... Uh, uh, largely unchanged since the 1980s when the New York Times described it, uh, and, uh, gets in, it's, uh, very bizarre, very bizarre and, uh, not exactly sensitive to everyone's situation, uh, because of the, um, just a really strange and surreal stuff you got to read about, uh. So very, very uh, uh, strange intersection of commerce and fandom uh, that uh, Adam says, I'd love to see it and witness it with my own eyes. Mother Cabbage, give, Mother Cabbage giving birth, uh, like the GW Zoo before Tiger, Tiger King. Uh, 
is uh, it, it's 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 very uh, very very interesting. In the primordial soup of my notes on this newsletter, I played around with including some of my favorite uh, elements from my local alt weekly growing up: back page ads, horoscopes, mediocre comics. But what better place for a newspaper to come from than Babyland General Hospital, an alternative reality unto itself? Uh, the aforementioned New York Times piece ends with this kicker. I like Babyland General, said Nurse Gina, because you can come in here and get completely away from New York, the world, and the planet, said an onlooker, completing her sentence. And Adam says, I don't think this newsletter will quite succeed in transporting you to teleporting you to another planet, but I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I'd have to agree with that. Uh, here on Radio Nightwater, WNQW. We'll be back with another question after this break. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in to WNWQ. It's time for a spot, a fake sponsor spot uh, here at NWQ. We're proudly supported by me misclicking a link uh, and then clicking the guided access uh, here. And W, and W N W Q. You know what I was asking uh, here on W N W Q. We're probably sponsored by talking about stuff at night. Uh, and how about Pokemon? Now you may have you, you know you may miss this in March of uh, 2021. There's no better time to read it again. Because uh, Adam points out, you know, there's messages in uh, documentary films that, uh, you know, all of us could be susceptible, especially if they're taking us on an emotional journey. And Adam was particularly influenced by a particular uh, film about a particular fast food place with golden arches uh, back when they used to say, and I I guess I think about this uh, an empo- you could say it in an empowering way. You felt empowered to size it up, yo. And that film uh, talked about a lot about it, processed uh, all the stuff going on at the Golden Arches and so much more. Now, Adam and Chloe have uh, were talking about, uh, years later, going vegan and another documentary called The Game Changers. Uh, they did a vegan January, and when January ended, they did not stop. And Adam talks about how, hey, this change, I uh, thought I would miss it, uh, meat, cheese, eggs, but m- m- more, I thought what I thought was more than it really is. Uh, but also the ideas around TV and advertising and then Adam's result, another emotional journey, just like a documentary here at W and WQ. Is that right? W and W Nightwater questions. Yeah. Because Adam was talking about that Pokemon Happy Meal. The meal that makes a Pokemon Happy or Adam Happy. Uh, the four pack, maybe the six pack. Oh, no, it came with a four-pack of collectible Pokemon cards. You know, the past weekend when Adam wrote this uh, in March uh, was the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. Kicked off in Japan in 1996 with the first set of Game Boy games. Since then, it spawned anime, TV, film series, manga, trading card game, gadgets, toys, clothing, and eight generations of core video game series. Three million in jet aircraft sales. It's uh, today's highest, gross, gross, highest grossing media franchise. Now, what's uh, Pokemon's... Uh, oh, I forgot I was supposed to ask questions about this. Adam, what do you think Pokemon's uh, tr- staying power comes from? Well, maybe it's its lasting appeal, he says, uh, to children and adults. While the primary audience will always be kids, Pokemon is carefully dealt in nostalgia. A common theme at night with Nightwater. Oh, that nostalgia. If there's a nostalgia fi- picture, it's probably fit for the evening, right? Uh, 
It probably does have, you, you know, it has, uh, if there's a nostalgia fil filter, better have late night vibes. You know what I'm saying, Patrick? Am I right? Uh, maybe not, uh, because I rarely am. Uh, but then, uh, the let's see, now I got off track. As early as 2004, when it remade the original Game Boy games in the third generation consoles. Remakes are a major feature of the Pokemon video franchise. A remake of the fourth generation games was just announced as part of the 25th anniversary celebration. You know where else we see Pokemon? Uh, yeah, you, what I used to like, I think this, was this all the way back? What year was Adam talking about? 2004. Let's check these dates. 1996. I think I, that was one of my go-to things back when it was Pokemon versus Digimon. For I mean, po, po, it was kind of like uh, Transformers and the GoBots uh, for me. I mean, I always said, why can't you like them both? But I used to try to win over. That's how I'd win over children of that generation. See, tell me, who, who, who what do you prefer, Pokemon or Digimon? Digimon, because uh, I could see Digimon may have had a better tagline. Digimon Mon, Mondo, Mondos, or whatever they were called in the show. What was my point? I got way off topic. Oh, I was thinking of, uh, the whole reason I came up is because I was thinking of the Pokemon balloons. Pokemon balloon, the different ones on, uh, was at the Macy's Parade. But Adam said, unsurprisingly, the vast age range of fans it leads to some tension. I don't know if you knew this, uh, but Post Malone, before Post Malone was swinging, slinging, uh, I don't know what it is, like uh, something, a cool lifestyle. I, I say, what's Post Malone doing? Getting people are following him around. I wish, I, like he's like a Pied Piper. And first he was pieing his pipes, uh, not first, but at one point within the, there was a 25th anniversary concert uh in the po where is it uh in the pokemon community oh a virtual pokemon concert but let's get back to talking about those meals of happiness right uh because what could go wrong with limited edition collectible pokemon cards and happy meals well natch lots uh sealed boxes of cards on ebay no one go, not even going to stores, uh, collectors, uh, ma Twitch streamers, mass purchasing meals, uh, selling out locations, the k kids not getting them. No, that's not happy. And to add insult to injury, they didn't even, you know, they don't even respect the fact that there's food there. Now, there's nothing wrong, Adam says, with adults collecting toys or cards, but it's frustrating to watch them act as if they're entitled to have them. And he's saying that, of course, because he likes Pokemon cards. Oh, boy. And while vegetarian and vegan options are proliferating in chain restaurants, here's the thing. McDonald's does not have any non-meat options for Happy Meals, Ronald. What do you do? Seriously, Ronald, get it together, man. The best they can do is a bag of apple slices. So what were his options? He could get the Happy Meal and toss the food, but uh, he wasn't happy with that. Trawl eBay and support the people who are doing that. And he asked a friend. Maybe a friend could help me. If you're thinking about getting some nuggets, grab me a pack. But Adam felt like he was, in, he was losing the battle. And then who came in but Mama and... Uh, Mom said, maybe I got to get a Happy Meal. And the Happy Meal box looked like a, like it's a cute little Pokemon. Uh, has no more the Pokemon can fight. Uh, two packs of Pokemon cards to the winner. So uh, Adam 1, well, Adam 2, or 4, 2, 8, 8, technically, I guess. Uh, 8 Pokemon cards. Uh, Adam 8. McDonald's, uh, whatever, I don't know, one bill, whatever they say. One, they used to say that they got so many people served. Uh, all right, it's getting to the end of our broadcast tonight here on uh, W, I think, W, NQW. So maybe we got to talk a little bit more 
about uh, late night vibes. Uh, I think uh, as I, oh, wait a second, there's a pro could the property boat, r how big is it? Well, boy, we got to go back. Uh, we'll, we'll hold off on our clothes here. Cause I didn't even see, I don't, I missed this article when it came out. Uh, how big is the property brothers in, in media empire, Adam? This is one of, as I've said, this is one of the shows I watch on, on an airplane. It's a Shark Tank or Shark Tank like shows, Property Brothers type shows. I will watch them on someone else's screen, not on mine, on an airplane. That's not a, that's just, I don't know. It's like I actually enjoy it. Uh, I'll probably be editing a podcast, watching Property Brothers or Fix That House or whatever on mute i say hey do you mind putting the closed captioning on and see i'm in seat like whatever 24 seat 22 21 21 a could you put on the closed captioning but uh they never listen because uh but it doesn't matter i could figure it out usually i was thinking of this one i saw and actually i had to ask the person about it because they said what's going like uh I don't know what it was. It was like, I think a family of people uh, fixing up a house, uh, and it was popular, but anyway, property brothers should host a dating show. This is from September, 2021. Uh, Adam became a big, uh, you know, when things were going, going on 2020, 2021, Adam became a big fan of the va bachelor franchise, uh, this wasn't his first time watching a dating show. He used to watch reruns of the dating game on Game Show Network. But Bas Bachelor, the Bachelor, is fascinating in a different way. Now, now this is a show I don't watch. Uh, um, I've, I think I've tried to watch it, but I have too many, like, uh, I don't know how to watch it because uh, they either would have... Uh, it, like it, it's too far into inferior or, you know, I say, well, am I inferior or superior? You know, am I going to make fun of people or am I going to feel poor? So I say, let's just not watch it. Uh, but the Bachelor's fascinating in a different way. Yeah, there's game, winners and losers, but almost everything on the show is pretending that the game does not exist. And that takes some mental gymnastics to be successful on the show. And that's impressive, as impressive as the Olympics. Uh, and uh, recently, The Bachelor's been looking for a new host. Uh, and Adam said, recruit the Property Brothers. Heck, give them a dating show. So Jonathan and Drew Scott, uh, from here on, Adam will f refer to them collectively as Property Brothers, a pair of television personalities who play act, play act at buying and renovating homes for regular people. Now, it's obvious that their envision, ambitions are much bigger than their namesake show on HGTV. There's 11 shows. So probably one of the ones I'm talking about in the Property Brother franchise. As well as books, a podcast, even a cruise. Would you, do they t <laughs> Really? A cruise? Uh, maybe Adam and I could go to the, like, uh, cru uh, we could stop at the Cabbage Patch on our way to the Property Brothers cruise. Won't you take me on a Property Brothers a sea cruise? Uh, never been on a cruise still. I don't, th I don't know if it would be a good idea to go on a Property Brothers cruise first. Uh, or if you're, if you're a fan, like, do you say you're a property bro? Like, uh, if you're, do you say, yo, man, I'm a property bro. Mama Drew too, man. Are they twins or brothers? I don't know. But, um... The Property Brothers even have mentioned wanting to host a daytime talk show, but to me, that's child's play. Do it on do The Bachelor. Can't compete, Adam says. A single season of The Bachelor brings in almost $100 million in ad revenue. I think, it, like, maybe I'm wrong, but its entire revenue of podcasting, of every podcast in existence, or one, even if it's, I, know, I guess it's one-tenth of every podcast of every podcast out there. Anyway, what would the Property Brothers dating show look like? Here's some con, con listen up Hollywood or wherever the Property Brothers are b b based. Uh, there's a casual one and a um, business one, like Alex P. Keaton. They actually, 
So when I'm looking at the the uh, mock-up Adam had with the two property brothers, uh, one of them looks a lot like my cousin, the casual one. I don't know if that's Drew or Tyler. Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan and Drew. Okay, but uh, let's drop some concepts. How about the homeowner's dating game? A homeowner must choose between three suitors. All of whom, oh, this is good stuff. All of whom will b briefly redesign one of the rooms in the home. The suitor who does the best job according to the brief. This is a very dating game, uh, as judged by the property brothers with the homeowner, wins the dates. The homeowner gets three renovated rooms. Uh, how about uh, one and two? Uh, kind of like the show where you're in your birthday suit and dating renovating and a little bit uh, thinking about stuff and not feeling comfortable. Two individuals, uh, you know, leave their lives and go on a series of dates with one another while living in a house they're renovating with the property brothers. If they successfully renovate the house, they split the final sale of the house 50-50, even if the romantic relationship does not work out. E e but if either one of them leaves the house uh, unable to take uh, cooperation on a high, high stakes renovation while dating, they get nothing. This could be good if they ha like, I think if they have to have a date every night, uh, I mean, that could be also, we could get some, we could get some science, different, you know, areas to study that. Uh, Cause you say, okay, first of all, I got to work all day. I think the property brothers it would be good too if they lived there, or maybe there'd be also a documentary. You get a documentary, like, cause maybe I mean I'm not judging the property brothers, but if they if they're they would probably leave the house and stay in one of the five star hotels, whatever town they were in. It's pretty common in any ride or whatever you call it uh, to to hire somebody like that. So they'd be saying, let's just say four seasons, right? Uh, It'd be interesting to follow them. And it's not a judgment on them. It's just usually contractually. Somebody be like me, I'd be fighting for a Hyatt, right? But they're at that level. Like, or they say, okay, that's right. That's what we'd have. We'd be like, just build it into the budget, basically. So either way, but if you leave, you don't get anything. I mean, that'd be a nice boost, uh, and that would be good for their, for, they could even, that would be, could be, could be one not as big as The Bachelor. I think Adam's got a, that's a viable idea. And that's more of a, and I mean, no offense, but that's a HGTV idea. Trading loving spaces. So boy. Okay. So a couple who's been dating for less than a year and don't live together, swap houses and with the help of the property brothers, transform the bedroom into, in two days. But the homeowner does not get a say in the redesign. And it's up to their partner to know their taste and the property brothers keep it, you know, keep it PG-13, you know, when Adam says. Uh, so that would be interesting. I also think it would be good, it'd be cool because you could, um, they could do uh, the cold open could be the person's reaction, like some of their reactions, like you could edit it really interestingly. And, I mean, because you could ask them, I guess you could set up, uh, like, what they're wearing during the, the Talking Heads interviews or whatever you want to call it. What do they used to call it when I was an intern? SOT, sound on tape, I think. Uh, so you get them um, talking, and then you know, you don't know when this, what the interview is coming from, if it's coming from before they renovated the house, after, or during, or which house it's even referring to. Now, if anybody wants to reach out to Adam, it's at nightwater.email. Use the link in our show notes. The possibilities for property brothers dating shows are endless. And their charming personalities will bring any concept to life. Anybody need any hosting tips? Uh, oh, Zoe Deschanel is the host of the celebrity dating game. And in a relationship with Jonathan, uh, one of the property brothers. Uh, so, yeah, like, let us know. Warner Bros., Discover, Property Bros., Scott Brothers Global. Interested in these concepts? Uh, Adam's ready, man. 
Okay, let's uh, close it out here. And our broadcast day extended into, uh, uh, let's see. Okay, let's talk about it. When your pumpkin's out, let's finish up with some late night vibes. Uh, this question came in from Adam. Uh, what goes on the night before Halloween and what did you call it in your hometown? I guess this is from Adam out to the world, though. This is an uh, NWC, N W N W Q C uh, night water cooler. We didn't get a lot of answers here, so this will give you a chance to interact, uh, to show some love, some night water love. Um, is uh, you know, the night before Halloween, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what's the vibe? Uh, does the sun set before dinner? Are cold winds running down the street, TP, hanging on the trees? And alternatively, if you don't celebrate the night before the Halloween, what, what's your Halloween night vibe? Now, Thomas B. said, my Halloween vibe is trying to explain my costume to my friends over the music on the dance floor. That's good stuff. And Dylan said, TP on the trees and omelets all over town. I got to agree, the vibe, I think, is, uh, for me, is uh, wind. It's cold, but it's not brisk. Uh, there's wind, enough wind to move the leaves down the center of the streets. And that's when, uh, you know, the, if it's a late-night vibe, that's when the TP looks good. Dogs barking. Maybe you're hearing somebody warming up their sound effects from the night before. And uh, I don't know, what about the night after Halloween? When you're walking your dog, here's the thing. At least where I live, uh, you got to keep your eyes open because there's usually candy that, uh, I guess it was dark, kids are getting in and out of cars. Uh, and so we have a lot of stray candy that uh, has been forgotten. And that doesn't blow around like a, the candy, candy doesn't blow around like it used to. But yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, my other, I mean, mine is, <laughs> mine is hunkering down, uh, lying low, uh, just cause, uh, back in, in my other life, uh, I had some Halloweens, uh, I prefer never to, you know, like, uh, but it's cute. It's just too busy for me. I'm trying to think what I did for this Halloween. I guess probably went to, I don't know what I did. I know I didn't do much. And nobody comes to my house. Oh, you know what? I had something. I can't remember anymore, but uh, I do know the vibe I feel. I like it, the, the, the quiet time, but something else is still going on. So it's like maybe the quiet's interrupted by some teens racing in the car, dealing, you know, dealing in pumpkins. And in, in a way, that could be frustrating, or eggs, uh, if you're frustrated by those things. But it's the one or two nights of the year where you say, oh, boy. If it's just eggs and TP and uh, a pumpkin that's uh, or a jack-o'-lantern that's lost its way, as long as the wind's blowing and the leaves are scraping, that's all we need to know. So that's it tonight for tonight's broadcast. A w, what is it? W, NWQ, Nightwater Radio. To find out more, make sure to post uh, your... Some of your night vibes, uh, night water vibes and the night water water cooler. Does it say water cooler choice? I already closed it down the page. Uh, check it out, uh, and hopefully we'll do another one of these uh, again because we got more, more, more water. There's, you know what? Uh, there's more to drink, more night water. Maybe. Maybe I shouldn't drink night water. Uh, here. Saying goodnight from the from the W N Q W Q Studios uh, Radio Nightwater. Good night. All right, I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently. Uh, Grafton, Olivia, and Cara. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And goodnight, Misty, Chris, and Noah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And goodnight, Jay, Eric, and Pamela. Thanks. 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 And goodnight, Kara, Holly, and Mikkel. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And goodnight. Paul, Casey, and Spoon. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night, Paul. That was Paul. This is Paul M. 
Danny and Sarah, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Oz, Pierre, and Audra, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Roy and Xanthi, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. We're as a, here as a free podcast. Get people to support the show on Patreon or support our sponsors. Uh, we, what else uh, do you need to know? Oh, we grow as a show by people spreading the word. You could just let somebody know, even about podcasting. You don't even have to tell them about sleep with me. And it's always like that attraction rather than promotion kind of thing. You just say, oh, this is the podcast I listen to. This is the app I use. It's on my phone or this is where I downloaded it from. And this is why I love these shows. Uh, if Sleep With Me comes up, that's great. Uh, if not, that's no big deal. As long as people say, oh, I don't know, because most people that don't listen to podcasts, you know, there's people that are never going to listen, but I think there's a large number of people out there that just haven't, that, there's like some other block, and they're like, okay, uh, you, like, uh, that's like, a, they, they, they didn't realize that there's everything to listen to. I mean, anything, fiction, nonfiction, uh, learning, whatever. So, yeah, um, let them know. You could join our referral program. That's for more actively referring people to podcasts. That's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. And, uh, yeah, that's it. What do you say? Uh, we slow, what, 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 there's, here's some of our tuck you in sponsors that have enabled us to grow. My head is, uh, I guess I got a little, it's old scoots here, tucking you in with some tuck you in sponsors that have like this group, these sponsors that have been sticking with the show. We grew, you know, that's how we get all those more than double the episodes now. I'm so happy about that in the feed for free. Thanks. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots with, uh, like, a tuck you in uh, message here for our Bedtime Story podcast. Uh, we're trying out, uh, and I kind of said this, you know, free way to support Sleep With Me and Bedtime Stories from Sleep With Me is join our referral program, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. You get rewarded for introducing people to free version of Sleep With Me, including access to Sleep With Me Plus. Uh, but the, most of all, just think about what your favorite podcast is or one of your favorite podcasts uh, and then support that podcast. It doesn't have to be Sleep With Me, but just to support your favorite podcast uh, because they could use your support right now. Uh, and if you decide, oh, Sleep With Me is actually my favorite podcast. Well, the, wow. Uh, blushing, seriously, uh, even though it's imaginary here in this context and support it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus or listen to a show you love and, and see how they want to be supported. Thanks.